I crouch in the corner of my room, staring into the glass well of my hands. Far down, I see myself drowning in air. I sit up and take a deep breath. As I welcome the air into my lungs, I ask it to stop. I ask it to stop and hold it captive inside the iron enclosure that's my rib cage because if I let it go this time my parents are certainly going to die in a plane crash and not allowing myself to breathe while counting till 99 was the best I could do to save them. I hear there's someone on the door. It started as a polite knock. Tap, tap, tap. Always three times. My heart asked timidly to leave my body to open the door. Tap, 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 on my ribs, always in three, my heart has OCD, you see. It's mom and dad back home from a movie. What happened to your arm? Mom asks. How do I tell her? My skin was rubbed raw because someone touched me on the sidewalk without my permission and I had to rub it till the soap tints my skin red like ripening tomatoes. Dad says I'm crazy, mom says I'm insane, but how do I even begin to explain to them what I feel inside my brain? How do I tell my mom that my brain is a galaxy and I'm a spaceship dodging asteroids, doomed to collide? Because self-destruction is the calmest concept I know of. I always believed that since my second toe was a little longer than my biggest one, I would have good luck. Well, that's what they say, isn't it? Well, I guess they were wrong, because when my orgasms are not there between my thighs, but are in a sense of symmetry, rechecks and organization, when I force myself to not step on the lines of the floor tiles, because either I'll break my mother's back or I'll fall, I don't think that's a life luckiest of all. If it's true that rabbits can die of loneliness, aren't human beings frightfully close to bunnies? I mean, I'll be frank, I'm pretty sure we are because loneliness is the worst on Sundays when I have to clean my room and my all-purpose shower playlist is my only companion. I play the first song. I restart the first song because I got distracted. I restart it because I missed my favorite line. I restart it for the third time. I restart it for the fourth time because I like even numbers. And finally the song has started. And I still can't enjoy my only companion in my loneliness because I'm accompanied by unwelcomed intrusive guests in my brain whose purpose of presence I can't even explain. So I decided to grab something to eat. Today's menu reads, for dessert, choked volcanic eruption, a chocolatey mountain of OCD, topped with whipped anxiety and glazed with a constant dialogue of thoughts which loop round and round and round and round and round. No matter what I do or try, nothing silences the sound. So don't tell me that you're so OCD just because you like to be neat. Because I scrape at my scalp with a dusty razor until only raw skin is left. Because I felt an itch. Don't tell me that you're so OCD because it's actually a racing heart and teary eyes. It's a dry mouth with shattered plans. It's my mind always telling me lies like the lie that I'm fucked up beyond all belief. Like the lie that I must have hurt the ones who care. Like the lie that my time on earth will be brief. So don't tell me that you're so OCD. Because when you see me counting on my fingers and making weird movements with my tongue and rechecking if I locked the door or not, it's because trust is a long lost friend and this unstoppable hamster wheel in my mind just won't end so don't fucking tell me that you're so OCD because you are abusing my illness and taking pride in my sadness. OCD is a mental disorder, not your method in madness. OCD is like having mental hiccups which won't just go away with seven sips of water. It's actually my sanity on slaughter. It's like I'm trying to dial 100 for help, but my fingers just won't push the right damn buttons. So please, please don't tell me that you're so OCD because my OCD is beyond what your neatness can see.